So with spooky season getting closer and closer, I decided it'd be kind of fun to dust off this AU um, for shits and giggles. I thought this would be a lot of fun to do. I thought this would be a fun one to knock out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than a a Universal Monster AU. Basically taking the Disney characters and making them into versions of the classic monsters. So, let's get started with this story. So the story starts out with, um, basically, we f we're in France. We start out in France, and a opera is taking place, it gets sabotaged, and it's by, the, of course, the Phantom of the Opera. Now, this version, Luz is the Phantom of the Opera. She was basically, um, obsessing over Amity, who is a young dancer and singer that she obsesses over, but due to, due to a um, scar she suffered from an acid burn being thrown at her by a rival dancer, uh, Luz has now been living in the catacombs of the opera house and basically being the Phantom. Now, that, is, that does change when she is approached by Gus. Gus in here is a little different. Um, no, not Gus, excuse me, um, Hunter. Excuse not Gus. Gus plays a part in here, but not, um, who you think. But Hunter, excuse me, yeah, it was Hunter. Hunter basically approach, finds her and approaches her, and he's like, my, ma you know, my master would like to meet you. He has been looking for others like you, and he's like, there are no others like me. And, he and Hunter goes, I, I protest, but you should go meet him. So Hunter uh, it, it brings Luz to not Transylvania, but brings her to Mexico. She bring he, he brings Luz to Mexico, and while there, they're sta they're at this uh, cas this massive Castilla, and it's this very Gothic aesthetic too. So. They're not alone there, because it turns out there is another person that's already there, and that's Dipper. Dipper in this continuity um, is a very brilliant scientist, but the problem is he has a bad case of bring of uh, digging up the dead. Yeah, he's our Dr. Franken Victor Frankenstein, and he's more... He is, he's very Colin Clive about it. He's very Colin Clive uh, Victor Frankenstein, where he's like obsessed with his work, um, but the monster is much different, and the monster has gone missing. He's basically been like, I've been looking for the monster, but our, my benefactor basically found me, but he could not, so I help, he wants me to help me find the creature. So, there is that. Now, the, the benefactor is Marco. Marco, in this continuity, is Count Dracula. Yeah, he, it, Marco Diaz is Dracula. So this version of Dracula is a lot different. Rather than being um, of Romanian descent, uh, Marco's version of Dracula is more of Aztec, like Mesoamerican um, descent of a vampire. He was once, thousands of years ago, he was once a priest um, who was who was set to sacri who was sacrificing people to the god Kemazots. But then he fell in love with one of the, um, one of the sacrifices. He basically fell in love with one of the virgins who was star back then. He fell in love with her, um, but it was decreed that she must die. But he tried to get her to, he tried to make her escape. The gods were kind of pissed about that, especially Kamazots. It was like you, you, my own priest denied me a sacrifice. I'm gonna damn, kill her and damn you for all eternity. So, Kamazots turned um, Marco into a, mo into, the mo into a monster, into a being that can never see the sunlight again like Kamazots, and must feed on the blood of um, the innocent. So, he is now Count Dracula. Basically, his whole thing is that he's lived so long that he's heard stories about all of these mon of these different monsters, and and uh, Luz is like, you do realize that I am not like you, Count. I am in, it, although he's more known as not Count, he is known as uh, Don Marco Diaz. He is a Don. So it, so she so she basically tells uh, Marco, 
Don Marco, I am not like the other... I am not like um, the others. I am not a monster. And he's like, but your actions speak otherwise. You are truly monstrous in other designs, such as the good doctor here. And our other guest. And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? She gets bumped in the back, and it's the Invisible Man, who in here is Pen Zero. So yeah, Pen Zero is the Invisible Man. Um, where, much like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, um, Marka, uh, excuse me, Pen's, what, Pen was a master thief who took the formula from Jack, after Jack Griffin died and took it for himself and made himself into the new Invisible Man. So the three of them are the first members of this now, the League of Monsters. So the League of Monsters are not good guys. They're here to more or less... Marco is basically trying to, like, ham it up. And also, if you've already guessed, Hunter is his Renfield. Hunter is basically his uh, equivalent to Renfield. I should have mentioned... Yeah, but you guys probably figured that out. But Marco, basically, what he is attempting to do is, is kind of Magneto it up. He's trying to make a world of monsters. If he cannot have, you know, the if he can never walk the sunlight and be free of his curse, he will make a world that is better. He will use his curse and make it like a kingdom of the damned. He will make the earth a kingdom of uh, of damned, wretched souls, such as, you know, the do and Dipper, Dipper is like, are you fucking crazy, man? I am a human being, and I work in science, not this mystic mumbo-jumbo. I've humored you enough, good sir. And, and Mark is like, Doctor, I haven't entertained you on the sole ground of, I know what that monster is, and you are a monster in your own right. You can't really go back, you know, you're wanted for grave robbery and murder. So... I can help, you know, I can basically make it better for you and the monster, which is out there somewhere, and I will help you find it if you help me. So, help a brother out here. So, Marco, Marco is basically like, we still, there are still a few others who are out there in the world, and I require... I require their assistance. You know, there are a few others who I, who I need of. So... Uh, Luz, Dipper, and Pen are sent first to um, further south into uh, South Africa. To, I mean, not South Africa, South America. Like, deep into the heart of the Brazilian Amazon to find the next creature. And, of course, it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Who, in here, the creature from the Black Lagoon is uh, Sprig. A, well, a version of Sprig. But this version of Sprig is more like a monstrous frog, a humanoid frog monster. And he is capable of speech, and he want uh, he wants to be you know free of being hunted and, and prodded by scientists and witch doctors and others. So he joins. The other one is in up is in um, upstate New York doing a series of bloody killings, and that is Rand Randy Cunningham, who in here this continuity uh, Randy is the Wolf Man. You see, in this continuity. Randy was a wealthy um, elite, a member of the social elite. Um, the Cunninghams were very, you know, well known. But then Hannibal McFist had it that not only were his parents killed in a fire, but he was he the Cunningham name was just destitute because um, Hannibal basically orchestrated, a, being the rival businessman and evil asshole that he is, decided. Um, he more or less planted evidence to ruin the Cunningham name to like have it that they were assisting the Confederacy. They were, you know, had ties to like embezzlement and, you know, with all these other wild ideas. So that was the idea. So the Cunningham name has been officially destroyed and Randy was left destitute. So much destitute that he was left as a vagrant and was come upon one night by a werewolf. So when the team meets uh, the uh, meets Randy as after he Wolfman's out, they're basically like, you know, we could help you get out of this. We could help you, you know, find a cure for being a like for lycanthropy. He's like, no, I'll help you, but you gotta help me kill McFist. I don't care about being a monster. He's made me a monster enough. You help me kill McFist, I will join your group. So he joins, 
And while this is going on, when they return back to Mexico, uh, Marco reveals that he had been recruiting himself. He basically recruited the next member of the team, and that's Marcy. Marcy in here was a, a young girl who was studying to be an archaeologist, and she was met by Marco. And Marco basically is like, basically reveals to her that you were a, you know, you're the reincarnation of a great uh, Chinese empress. So in here, she's the mummy. So yeah, Marcy Wu is the mummy. More off the um, Chinese mummies. So once she gets her, her past, Marcy's past lives reawakened, she joins the team as the this version of the mummy. Um, finally, the last member finds them. And that is the Frankenstein monster. The monster is Wendy. She is both the monster and the monster's bride. In this continuity, um, Wendy was, Mar uh, was Dipper's uh, bride. He was her wife. She died, and Dipper, consumed by grief, more or less took her brain and more or less piecemealed and killed several women and dug up other women's bodies to rebuild her um, stronger and, and, you know, able to conquer death itself. But when she was revived, she was like, what have you done to me? And fled. So, they, so yeah. Also, I had this fun idea where her hair is black, but it has the white streak in her hair, um, just like the bride. But yeah. So when so Wendy's the bride and Dipper talks her into joining them, and now that the team is almost fully assembled because there are there's a few other members they want uh, uh, Marco wants to recruit as well. Among them is uh, uh, among them is uh, Mabel, who in here Mabel is kind of already part of the team already. Because Mabel is the Igor, she is um, she is the Igor of this, and she was uh, disfigured, uh, born disfigured as the disfigured. She was the as she calls herself the ugly twin, but she assisted Dipper in his mad experiments to help Wendy. And there's also um, there is also uh, what was it? Um, Shit, I feel like I'm forgetting someone, but uh. anyway, so the, so the team does have a villain. You know, they do have a, a quote unquote villain of their own to do battle with, and that is Toffee, who in here, Toffee is our Dr. Van Helsing. And as Van Helsing, Toffee um, is sent by the church to destroy the League of Monsters. But the League of Monsters have their own plan. They are going to lay siege to the. To the uh, um, to the Vatican, they're gonna lay. They're now that they are united, they're gonna lay siege to the Vatican, and there is a scripture from the from the first book of Satan that is underneath the uh, deep within the catacombs of the Vatican that they are guarding with their lives because in there is a way to bring out eternal night. It is basically to wipe away the sun for all eternity, and that's what Marco wants. He wants to bring about the Forever Knight. And that's his plans. But Toffee and the Knights of the Holy Order are the only thing standing between him and the League of Monsters. Um, in here, Toffee, not only is he um, Dr. Van Helsing, who in here, the reason why he looks so reptilian is because he suffers from a skin condition that makes him look reptilian, kind of like Killer Croc. And he looks like a monster in his own right, but he and, and Marco have done battle for ages. Um, in fact, Toffee is the reincarnation of a warrior who did battle with Marco ages ago when he first became a vampire. And he's basically been reborn through the ages to fight Marco, but every time he does, he he keeps getting killed. Like, that's the problem, is that he just keeps dying over and over again. And Marco is like, when the monster, when <laughs> Toffee's battling all the monsters, Marco is just like, if I can't, it, like, how many times am I going to kill you? It doesn't, uh, but then again, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep enjoying it, but here's where you fail. And he basically turns Toffee into a vampire, and he's like, yeah, good luck coming back this time, you know, being reincarnated this time. You can't, if I don't let you die, 
then yeah, you can't come back to stop me. So Mar so Marco unleashes the Forever Knight, and the monsters win. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a big dark ending. The monsters and all the forces of dark of evil just get to roam around the world freely. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much uh, my story. There you go. There's the uh, Disney universe, the Disney universe, mon uh, Universal monster mashup. So you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of it? Just comment below, let me know. Other than that, um, head over to my Patreon for exclusive content, and if you hit the fourth tier, you can send me requests for videos to do here on YouTube. But other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.